Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Better Rides, Better Riders. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. It's that time of the year again when the new models are starting to hit the ground. Some past years have only been bold new graphics, but for 2014, that's just not the case. So hold on tight, buckle into your Barca lounger, and be prepared for what might be the biggest news of the 21st century. While we don't actually get seat time on the new models during the January sneak peeks, we do get some, and this past year Polaris took us to Wyoming to show us what's new for 2014. What's unique for 2014 Snowcheck is an expansion of factory customization. So we have not only color choices, which we've had in the past, but more color choices and more color suspension components and side panels. So with our Pro models, for example, we have 10 unique color combinations for the rushes and switchbacks and Pro RMKs. And then in addition to that, we're bringing uh, storage choices. So people will have the option of adding handlebar bags or saddle bags or tunnel bags to the sled in the factory and it ships to the dealer just like that. So they can have true, truly custom with exactly the amount of storage that they want, the exact amount of wind protection that they want, um, choose electric start if they want or on some switchback models and assaults, even track options. So Polaris does this um, different than anyone else in that uh, nobody allows the customer really to to spec exactly the sled that they want. And we think that's important because customers don't want to see themselves coming down the trail and with a rush, a switchback, any of the Polaris models, you're just not going to see yourself coming down the trail because you're going to have something truly unique. Realizing the need for a broader reaching utility sled, Polaris's Voyager is a totally new direction for the ProRide chassis and mingles quality ride and handling with functional utility. The Indy Voyager is targeted at the customer who really wants to do something more with their snowmobile. So for that customer, it's not just about going out and having fun for a ride. They like to do uh, something more. They like to use their snowmobile for recreation, but it might not be just the pure joy of riding. So they might take it out and do ice fishing, or they might tow a trailer and go to, or to, go to their cabin. So the Voyager is set up with the features that that customer really needs. And part of that means, at its heart, that it's gonna be really solid on-trail and extremely capable off-trail. So the, from an on-trail perspective, you have the ProRide chassis, which is very rigid with a very secure and uh, confidence-inspiring IFS. And then in the back and in the overall balance of the sled, you have something that's very much like an RMK. So off-trail, it's really fun to ride. It can go wherever you need it to go. We offer both a 550 and a 600 uh, just based on um, the cooling that might be allowed, for example. So a 550 customer can operate in low snow conditions or no snow conditions in a, a variety of temperatures. New to the ProRide platform is a motor that's anything but new to Polaris, realizing the need for a smaller displacement power plant that's easy to use, durable, and cost-effective, Polaris has totally reinvigorated the entry-level category. So the 550 engine is really a pretty powerful uh, engine. It's 60 horsepower or so, so it has great acceleration, decent top speed, and in a chassis that weighs 50 pounds less than the IQ, this thing is just crazy fun to ride. One of the reasons why customers love the 550 is that they're easy to work on, and they're proven and you know you could ride them all day and you know, use them pretty bad and they come back asking for more. The Indy lineup has been a home run for Polaris and in 2014 we see growth to that line as expected in the premium category but a new sled that we weren't totally expecting is a price conscious lower displacement model. What Indy means to Polaris is legendary performance and simply fun. Now what we've done is we've taken that great brand and the image and everything that that stands for and we've spread it out amongst a lot of different segments in the industry. So last year we started with the 600, which is really the core of the performance market. This year we went both up and down. So we went to an 800 to give that core performance rider just a little bit more, kind of the ultimate Indy. The biggest engine, or equal to the biggest engine we've ever put in an Indy. We also at the same time went down to a 550 because an important part of Indy history has been an accessible sled that's available in, in the entry level category. And that 550 engine in this chassis is just tons of fun. Polaris is able to make huge leaps forward for the Indy line next season, and another brand that's bringing back a name that's synonymous with performance and durability is Arctic Cat, 
who for 2014 are resurrecting the name ZR. With all new motor designations, the biggest news for Arctic comes in the form of engines. The 600 class CTEC 2 DSI injects the fuel both on top of the cylinder and below, thanks to a very unique slot cut in the piston skirt. This new design is able to blast the small end piston pin bearing with the premixed gasoline that other manufacturers struggle with, increasing the longevity of the motor with lower oil consumption. While this design is not direct injected, it is fully EPA certified and produces a claimed 123 horsepower while also reducing the weight 10 pounds from the old 600 EFI. And Articat claims it's going to be class leading horsepower. While we were expecting the 600, what we were not expecting is the all new 7000 series motor. A 135 horsepower, triple cylinder fuel injected four stroke that sounds incredibly similar to the Yamaha Nitro. And that's because, well, it is the Nitro. In conjunction with Yamaha, Arctic Cat was able to procure the Nitro engine and shoehorn it into their ZR chassis. Oh wow, I didn't see that one coming. This is sure to be a success for Arctic with the impressively smooth and torquey Yamaha 135FI and legendary ZR handling. While motors and the supply relationship with Yamaha are the big news for Arctic in 2014, there's also some cool news coming by way of the all new 137 inch slide action rear suspension. The 141 inch mountain drive skid is still available in certain models. However, the XF lineup will now see the benefit of a shorter track, removal of the Fox air shock and a lengthened slide action suspension. We've been asking for a shorter skid since the 141 came out in the crossfire and now we have it. This new rail length is sure to keep the front end of the ZR planted and help reduce push in corners. The 128 inch slide action is a winner and we expect this variation to totally change Arctic's crossover line. Skidoo is doing what they do best for 2014, refining the gold they know they already have. And while there aren't any chassis changes for 2014, there are some very cool innovative features. The biggest news to be painted yellow is the introduction of the 900 Ace with get this, drive-by-wire technology. The first to hit the market, Skidoo engineers have found a way to not only control the throttle body electronically, but also introduce multiple performance settings in relation to the throttle position. Adjusted via a toggle switch, the three positions of Eco, Standard, and Sport can be toggled on the fly to give the 90 horsepower Ace the best fuel mileage, standard performance, or a sporty throttle response, while also incorporating a learning key, similar to Sea-Doo where a dedicated key will only allow a vehicle to travel up to a certain speed and can be locked into one of the three performance settings. Welcome to the future. Speaking of the future, the R-Motion rear suspension that is arguably the best riding rear suspension in the crossover category just took another huge leap forward for 2014 in the GSX LE. As if this suspension could get any better, it now comes with a Fox Air remote adjustable shock allowing on-the-fly changes. A very sweet setup. And speaking of sweet, the new graphics on the 2014 Freerides are in my opinion the most extreme to date, revolutionizing the colorization of a sled and taking showroom appeal to a whole new level. And while we are at the last of the manufacturers, we're certainly not at the least by way of changes, where for 2014, Yamaha has taken a step in a direction that I don't think any of us expected. So this year we have the new SR Viper lineup. Uh, the one behind me here is a blue RTX SE. Uh, it has a 1049cc uh, three-cylinder, four-stroke engine in it. This is kind of a, a departure of normal terms in snowmobile land where we're actually kind of co-mingling with another brand to create this product. It's not uncommon for us, but it's a little uncommon for the snowmobile world. Uh, now, I've ridden this snowmobile. It is an outstanding handling, super flat handling snowmobile, and it's a lot of fun to ride. One thing Yamaha riders are no doubt going to be wondering is just how much Yamaha DNA is in this sled. Yamaha buyers demand quality. Does the SR Viper live up to those expectations? Yamaha has really been known for fit and finish and quality and dependability and reliability. This machine meets all our standards. Yamaha's vision is, is to stay in the snowmobile business. Uh, you look, you know, a Apex, Vectors, Ventures, they all got tuner skis. And that takes time and effort. Uh, we came out with a new Phaser XTX model. So, 
you know, we're, we're looking at this as a, the entire snowmobile market that we have. Uh, this is only one section. We have all these other models to, to cover the rest of the model lineup. Now in four years, we do have our 50th snowmobile anniversary. So to say we won't have new product for that is hmm, kind of stupid. <laughs> it's been a huge year for new product, big changes, and industry altering ideas. And we know that you have lots of questions, especially about the new Yamahas. So tune in to the last episode of this season where we'll take you behind the scenes and give you an in-depth look at the new SR Viper and what this means for Yamaha. In the world of two-up comfort, there are very few sleds that truly deliver everything that you ask of them. But in Yamaha's case, the 2013 Venture GT leaves very few stones unturned. Based essentially off the Vector, the Venture features the Delta Box 2 front chassis that incorporates all the features two-uppers demand. If you're in the two-up category, you want the best of both worlds, incredible all-day comfort, yet at the same time, a very nimble and rideable sled if you're out cruising on your own, which in most cases is the majority of riding done with a two-up sled. Don't get me wrong, the Venture is not a trail rocket by night and a two-up touring sled by day, but it does deliver similar characteristics to the Vector, which is a great one-up trail touring sled. Because of the use of the Delta Box 2 chassis, the Venture includes electric power steering. The only sled in the two-up category to do so, and in my opinion, is one of the best options for those looking to tour with a passenger. Power steering truly shines in this category, where railing corners and roosting the ditches is never a concern. At the end of the day, you truly feel limber, not realizing just how much it may have taken to muscle around the same sled without EPS. Since it's built similar to the Vector, the Venture also touts the 120FI Genesis triple cylinder four stroke that in my books is one of the smoothest and crispest four strokes in the biz. I may get labeled as pro Yamaha, and you know what, I just might be. Yamaha is a motor company and delivers four stroke power better than any other manufacturer. In fact, most other manufacturers will use Yamaha as a benchmark in the motor department because of their huge torque incredible performance, the smooth power delivery, and their second to none reliability. Is 120 horsepower enough for a two-upper? Absolutely. While there are some rocket ship sleds that catapult two people with monstrous power, the Venture, in my opinion, is perfect in the power category. All day cruising is fuel efficient, torquey, and very smooth. Flipping the throttle lifts the skis slightly, and thanks to the lengthened 144 inch track, when you drop the throttle for a corner, the skis grab, and the EPS steers the sled with ease. Top end on the lakes may not be earth shattering, but it's totally acceptable, and the Venture delivers smooth, strong torque right to the last millimeter of throttle cable pull. The advanced fuel injection system on the FI delivers a solid, smooth, crisp roll on, and yet when you blip the throttle, it's torquey and stout. While the 144 is a long skid, the Pro Comfort CK design is one of the smoothest riding two uppers going with very few drawbacks, if any. Featuring dual 40 mm HPG shocks, the CK is not only smooth, it's advanced. The rear arm shock is a piggyback with compression adjustability offered by a simple to use clicker. This allows for an easy to adjust rear suspension that delivers 12.4 inches of pure plush suspension travel, and it truly delivers on its name of Pro Comfort while also delivering a shock package that you wouldn't expect to find on a two-upper. In the two-up class, the name of the game is always amenities, and the Venture delivers with a list that's hard to compare. With storage and wind protection at the top of the class, if you're traveling, you need storage, and the Venture GT has the most cleanly integrated trunk in the business, featuring a hard top color matched trunk with watertight gasket, the rear storage compartment is huge and totally usable. On the front end of the Venture GT, the windshield is incredibly large and possibly a little bit less than visually appealing. But on the coldest days, you're gonna be glad you have it here because it'll keep you warm right from the time you start all the way until you hit the kill switch at the hotel at the end of the day. While Yamaha is best known for their motors, their fit and finish plays a close second. No matter what Yamaha you buy, you can be sure the quality of craftsmanship is second to none. The Yamaha Advantage is so much more than just the motor and reliability Yamaha is known for. It's also more than the experience that you're gonna have at Yamaha's first class five-star dealers. It's the quality you'll feel from the first time you swing a leg over in the dealer showroom until the odometer clicks past 15,000 miles. 
The attention to detail Yamaha puts into every product they make does not go unnoticed, and the Venture GT delivers first class fit and finish from the ski tips to the snow flaps in a way that no other manufacturer has been able to duplicate. The Venture GT may not have the biggest motor in the category, but it does deliver a perfectly matched power plant with an incredibly smooth riding chassis and suspension. And in my books, that hits the bullseye dead center every single time. Today's high-end performance sleds come with more and more sophisticated suspension and shock setups year after year. Generally speaking, the average rider doesn't think they take full advantage of the adjustability offered by even factory shocks. But take this adjustability away and suddenly it becomes clear just how useful it was. Proof of this phenomenon can be found on the front of the 2013 Skidoo Renegade 800X package. Skidoo decided to remove the fully adjustable remote reservoir piggyback KYB shocks from all of their X package sleds a few seasons ago. I guess they figured nobody would notice and the lack of adjustability wouldn't be a big deal. I hate to say it, but they were wrong. Luckily for all you Skidoo riders out there, Fox has the answer to this conundrum. It comes in the form of their Ultra Trick Float X Evol IFS shock specifically designed and tuned for the front of a Skidoo Rev XP or XS chassis. Fox Float X Evol shocks are the pinnacle of snowmobile shock technology. They feature an infinitely adjustable air spring chamber to save weight, reservoirs for increased shock stroke, added oil capacity and better oil cooling, and anodized caps on all externally threaded openings. Installation of the Float X E-Ball shocks is about as basic as a snowmobile upgrade can get. Two bolts to remove the stock shocks, two bolts to install the Fox shocks, and you're back on the snow. The most difficult part of the whole process is getting a wrench on the top shock mount bolt under the rev bodywork. Right up front, let's just say it. Showing up with a set of Fox Float X E-Balls on the front of your sled is kind of like showing up to McDonald's in a Lamborghini. Everybody drops their nuggets and runs over to have a look. Their piggyback reservoir and cool shock shaft guards look like something you'd find on a Pro Mod race sled, but peeking just under the rear of the shock, you find an Evol chamber. This is where the real magic of this setup is hidden. The Evol chamber is a second, separately adjustable air reservoir that affects the progressive feel of the air spring and helps resist bottoming at the very end of the shock stroke. The Evol chamber is adjusted independently but in conjunction with the main air chamber, allowing a rider to tune not only for weight and ride height, but for spring rate and anti-bottoming resistance as well. Combine this adjustability with high and low speed compression and rebound clickers and you truly have the most adjustable shock setup ever offered to trail riders. Since it didn't take long to install the Float X Evols on our 800 Renegade, I decided to take them out and see how they worked. Now I know this comment isn't in relation to performance, but man, did these things ever look cool. They definitely increase your mental horsepower. On the trail, I was able to tweak the Float X's clickers to suit my riding style and the trail conditions. When things were smooth, I turned down the high-speed compression clickers to provide a softer front-end ride. When the bumps got bigger though, it only took a few seconds to bump up the compression clickers a few notches to stiffen up the ride and help prevent the shocks from stroking through their travel too quickly. On a typical trail, I really do feel the Float X Evolves made a marked improvement in ride quality on our XS Chassis Renegade 800, but I wanted to push their limits a bit and see how they could handle just a little bit more abuse. I managed to find a rough section of trail on a portage between two lakes that had some bigger bumps and even a few decent sized launches. What I was really looking to test was the bottoming resistance provided by the Evol chamber. With a mix of a bit more compression and the Evol chamber pressure set to provide a more progressive air spring curve, the Float X's soaked up any gnarly square edge crater I could pound the sled into. Even landing a few pretty decent launches, I didn't experience any harsh bottoming at all. At the end of the day, I've come to the conclusion that Fox is delivering on everything they promised with the Float X Evols. They are not just bling. They do improve the ride of your sled in any real world condition. And even some extreme conditions, very few will ever have the opportunity to conquer. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by 
Polaris to rain domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by Go Ride Ontario. There's no place like this.